On today's show, we're going to learn how to make long exposure, time-lapse type photos using just your iPhone. You know what? You've already got everything you need. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here on YouTube at youtube.com slash photo joseph. Live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, talking about all kinds of fun things, photo, video, live streaming related. And today, we're talking about something super cool on the iPhone. Yeah, it's the iPhone. Now, this feature has been around since, I think, iPhone 7? Basically, any iPhone that does live photo mode and then with the latest OS, and actually, I think it's even the previous version of that. But um, if, you got, if your phone can do live photo mode and you've got a latest or even possibly previous version of OS, um, iOS running, you can do this too. So here's the crazy cool thing. It's all built in. This is part of the OS. This is part of the Photos app. This is not a third-party app that you have to download. It is just all built in and ready to go. So I'll just show you how to do it, and then we're going to look at some examples of where it kind of does and doesn't work. Now, I do have to, so I'm going to first bring it up like this. This is the original photo that's on the phone. Now, I can't show you the interface in this mode, so I actually kind of unfortunately have to do a little top-down view. So we're going to go top-down view onto the phone there. And there's the picture. That's the original photo that I shot. This is in Socha Valley in Slovenia. Some of you might have seen this on Instagram already. All you got to do is you swipe up, and you'll see these options called effects. You see live, loop, bounce, and then the last one is long exposure. You tap that, and that is literally all you have to do. That's it. Okay, that's it. Show's over. No, that's it. That is all you have to do. So this, what it's doing, when you shoot a live photo, it's basically shooting a short video. It's like three seconds or four seconds, it's just a short video. And you know that you shot that because as you're swiping through the phone, you'll actually see them kind of animate a little bit as they come in, right? So here, if I, um, I wonder if I can do that this way, actually. Do you see the live? Yeah, you do. So you see the live action thing come up there as they load up. There's a, a little bit, well, not on all of them. On some of them, you see a little bit of animation. There you go, as it comes in and then it kind of resolves. So that's basically what you're looking at, is just a live photo. And when you switch it over to the long exposure mode, it takes multiple frames and blends them together. And it finds the stuff that basically isn't moving and freezes that. And the stuff that is moving, it blends it all together. So this works best when you have a picture where in the scene you have some objects that are static and some that are not. Things that the kind of thing that works the best is like this. I mean, the running water is honestly going to be the best effect that you're probably going to find of this. So let's take a look at a couple other running water ones, and then I'm going to show you some other examples. I went out and about yesterday and shot a few things and just trying some things out, and I want to show you some that worked really well and some that didn't work either, which I thought was kind of fun and interesting. So let's go back to the overhead view on here. And so you've already so you've seen that one. So let's go to the next picture. It's another waterfall type of effect. Um, if I tap and hold on the screen, you see the little movie play. If I scroll up, we see the options. And remember, there's the other options in here are pretty cool too. Like there's a loop, right? So the loop option, let's let that play. Let's go out like this. The loop option finds a way to kind of seamlessly blend it together. And so it just plays forever and ever. That's, you know, that's kind of cool, right? So there's loop, there's bounce where it goes back and forth, which is, you know, kind of cute and fun for some things. And then the last one is the long exposure. So I tap that, there's the long exposure result, which is, you know, pretty cool, right? I mean, that's kind of a cool effect. So again, the running water is without a doubt where this works the best. All right, let's see. Another photo. Here's another running water one. And this one, there's hardly any. There's just a little bit going on on there. So let me go back to the long exposure on that. And this one is, is pretty effective, I think. So we see this where, again, we just have a little bit of an area. So you've got all the nice trees around there that are solid, the rocks that are solid, and then the nice little running stream. It's pretty, right? It's, I think it's really kind of cool. Uh, let's see here. Next one. Let's okay. Here's an interesting one. So now this one, we see these kids that were standing there by the water fountain, oh, by the little waterfall, and they are not still. They're moving. If I hold this down, you can kind of see they're moving a little bit. So this one doesn't really work for this very well because the kids are moving. So let's bring that up and go this way. So they, the kids become a blur. So you know, unless they were totally static, probably isn't going to work out so well. But that can come in really handy for some other things. So, oh, here's another one of the one of those. Um, so here's okay, here's the next one. So I thought, you know how you can do an a shot where you've got a long exposure, not long, like thirty of a second or something, and you pan following a moving object. It could be a runner, it could be a car, whatever. Um, if you if you can keep the frame 
the camera really right on your subject as they move, that long exposure means that the background is blurred because the background's moving, but the subject relative to the camera is not, right? It is not moving, so it should be static. Now, it's hard to get it perfectly sharp when you are shooting at, say, a 30th of a second, but you can do it, absolutely. Uh, you know, if, you're, if you start shooting it, especially if you haven't done this before, you'll probably get a lot more misses than you get hits, but the more you do it, the better you get at it. And of course, if you're in a situation like, say, a car race or a foot race or horse race, be cool, and you're seeing things go by, you have a lot of opportunities to try over and over again and find that right movement, find the right cadence to get into. So I thought maybe I could do that with this. Didn't really work out. And I think the main reason is because it's too long of an exposure. So let me switch back to... Uh, let's go back to this view, and you can see just how much every frame is moving, and it's just too too much, right? And the, the cars clearly are not in the same position in the frame. So if we if I switch one of these over to that long exposure mode, and sometimes this happens, you have to wait for it to load up. Um, it just is one big mushy blur. The shorter it is and the less movement there is, is going to be the better. So like this is a school bus that almost got in, but it clearly did not really work. The next one that I tried, I thought this would be kind of fun, was with these flowers. I wanted to see if I could hand hold this, and it didn't really work. But here was, here was what I tried to do. I held the flower. Look at this beautiful flower. I held it in my hand and did this so that I'd get a blurry background, a moving background, but a static subject. I think it would work. I really do, except that it was a windy day, and so even though I was holding the flower, it was still flapping around in the wind. So it didn't really work here, but I think on a calm day, I think this actually could work out pretty well. So I'll show you what I got out of it, even though it's not great. Um, let's just do it like this. So there's the normal one, and then when I enable the long exposure mode, uh, actually, that one already has the long exposure mode, doesn't it? That one's already applied. Okay, let's do a different one here. There you can see the amount of movement happening there in the flower. So I tried the long exposure mode, Waiting for that to load. There we go. And yeah, it didn't really work. I think it could work. Got to have a static subject and it would work. So then I started looking for other things that I think I thought would work out quite well. A flagpole, right? So, oh, the flag, it's a windy day. Let's take advantage of that. So I walked around town and I found a pretty decent view of the flagpole. Let's go for This is a better view here. We'll pull this one up. So there's the original. There's a still photo. There's the live photo. And then let's switch that over to the long exposure mode. And... We got it. There you go. So there's your long exposure mode of the flag. So that's kind of cool. So the flag flipping around in the wind. There's We have this thing in, uh, if you've ever been to Ashland, we have this thing called Lithia Fountain. And there's, so we're at Lithia Park and there's Lithia Water, not Lithium Water, as I heard a tourist say the other day. Uh, no, not quite. Uh, but the Lithia Water is full of minerals and it's supposed to be really good for you and it tastes and smells like sulfur. And it's really funny to watch people walk up to the fountain and go, oh, Lithia Water, take a drink and then run away screaming. Um, but this is the Lithia Water Fountain. So you can kind of see what that looks like here. And if I hold this down, oops, I guess I have to do it like this. If I hold this down, you can see it's bubbling up like that. Very old fashioned, uh, non-sanitary water fountain style, but you know, it's full of crazy chemicals and stuff. I don't think anybody's gonna get hurt. So let's now switch that into the long exposure mode. And this is kind of cool because you get this big old fuzzy, weird thing over the fountain. Kind of neat, right? Kind of neat. Okay, and then the last one that I thought would be really clever was people moving. Now this is, this would work better if you had, uh, a lot more people, but there are some people walking in front of a storefront and I thought, well, let's give this a try. So let's see, we get the right first photo up. Well, I took a few of them so we can switch through these. So there's the, obviously just a snapshot, nothing exciting here, but those people are all moving. So if I hold it down, you can see how much they're moving in there, right? There's the complete live photo, it's quite long. So let's go ahead and bring up the long exposure mode on that, give that a moment to render out and there you go. So this is not on a tripod, Right, if you're doing this on a regular camera, you really need to have it on a tripod because you're doing a 30th of a second or maybe a half second exposure or maybe even longer. Maybe you're doing a like 20 second exposure with a neutral density filter and the camera's static. You don't have to use a tripod with this, which is really cool. Just hold it steady because of the software looks at what is moving and what probably shouldn't be moving, separates the two, does the blending, and then isolates and locks down on the, uh, on the part that isn't. So, that's it. That is all there is to it. And the other cool part about that is that when you do this in the iPhone, you still have access to all the rest of the iPhone adjustments, right? So I can go in. Let me go back to the, uh, let's go back to one of the Socha Valley pictures. Um, let's choose this one here. So we'll go back to the overhead. So this one's set into the, the long exposure mode already. I can now go into the edit mode and I can still make, and I was going to download because iCloud, um, I can still make changes to this 
even when it's in this mode. So if I wanted to open this up and go into the lightness slider, for example, and change that, and you can see how that's affecting the picture, even though I've already switched it into the other, uh, the other viewing mode. I can go to like the vivid warm, it actually looks pretty cool. Uh, Pull that up, so I'm going to hit done on there, and then I'll do a quick side-by-side -side up here. Not a side-by-side, -side, but a uh, split view. There we go. So you can change the color view on there as well. And even at this point, I can go back to the standard view on it. It's really quite cool. So, so there you go. That, my friends, is what I wanted to show you today. So um, if you've gotten some great shots like this, I would love to hear about it. Uh, you know, Post something in the comments. Maybe post a link to it if you got it on a Flickr gallery, or I guess that's a smug mug gallery now, um, or whatever it might be. By all means, share them. I think it's awesome. Stick something in the comments below if you've had something really successful, especially if you've come up with a way to use it that's outside of what I've just shown you here. Um, we're going to do Q&A in just a moment here. Before we do, just real quick, um, as always, I want to remind you guys that we do have what we like to call a value for value proposition on this show. If you felt like you've learned something of value today, consider throwing some value back into the show. It's what helps us, keeps us on the air. Go to photojoseph.com support, and you can go buy a monthly thing on Patreon. You can do a one-off. You can shop in the affiliate store, or, or if you're doing something really complicated and big and huge, you can hire me directly. I am available. That's the joy of being a freelancer. Okay, that's that. Let's head over to the q and I don't know how many cues we're going to have for this one. It's a pretty simple topic, but we're going we're gonna to go there anyway. And of course, as usual, it's really an ask me anything that you want. So uh, click on the Q&A thing that is, it's, I got to figure out which direction that is. It's one of these places, and I'll see you in just a moment.